Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to continue building our chat app. Um, we have pretty much the layout already done. So the next phase will be actually do the Firebase connection for the database. And I will show you how to do that. Um, we have some pieces already configured. And as I said before, this is uh, this section is a little bit based on coding with Justin. And I will show you how that actually looks like. So the first thing that I was seeing is, is now that I've been seeing this for, for some time, it's actually too purple. So let me just change this purple to something else. You know, to gray, maybe. But let's reduce it to something like seven, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. And the text purple looks on how fine. Let's increase this to 500 too. Oops. I put an extra thing there. There you go. And no. <laughs> Let's reduce it to 200. Yeah, a little better. Just a little tint there. Put the color, we have the message, and we have the author. And the idea will be have some of those gray and probably some of those green right green will be the message that you send and gray will be somebody else's message right but for now we just keep it as it is okay so now it's time with the fun part it's time to do the database connection and uh, how actually um, it works in a view application in a uh, how to make the the connections through javascript and then on top of that, actually put view uh, in order to help you. So we're going to be using a couple of things that are actually going to be really, really excited. So let me just get back to my code. Right. Uh, let me just commit this one. Uh, fix it and message color. There you go. So we're going to open the use Firebase. We have the database exported already. We have almost there, but we need to finish it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import. Um, yes, and we need to import Firebase for what slash Firestore. So we have the database imported. Right? Remember that Firebase use like different sections depending on what you're using. Now we need to create a DB instance, and that DB instance actually call came okay, from a Firebase object. We need to pull up the Firebase, Firestore, sorry, Firestore, and we need to cons database is going to be execute that Firestore. There you go, and this should be something like this. There you go. So now we have that database object that's actually making the connection to that fire source and we have initialized as a DB object. Okay. So now that we have that, uh, we should be able to do something extra. So the first thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to do a import from view. We need to import preference actually. And we need to import on one mounted. I don't know why the other computer is not working there. Mounted, yes. Um, probably the best way to actually still using reference is shallow reference. Shallow reference, what it is, um, is a reference that is not going to be changed over time. Well. It will be somehow, but it's going to be read only. Like the way that actually it's reacted and everything, but it's just read only through the shallow reference. You will not save information to there somehow. I don't know if that makes sense. But let's keep as a reference for now because I don't want to introduce another concept. So the first thing that we need to do, and we put it on the database section, we actually need to create that. So we need to create another message. They're going to be our chat message, they're going to be a reference. 
profile empty array. There, in order to have the collection, in order what we need to do there, we need to have a collection in order to populate things from database. So let's create some called a message collection. That's going to be like on how equivalent as the table, right? So the way that Firefox works is, is to, it's a document, so every document is a collection. So we need to get the message collection, and this will come from the database. We have the database right here, right? And we need to do a simple collection, and we're going to create or call the message collection. As simple as that. And that's pretty much like getting the table, right? If, if you want to compare that re relational database. So the database for Firefox is just to have that. Now, we need to have some kind of query here. So we actually now need to make our message query. And that will be from the table. And something is happening with my auto completion. Um, you know what? Give me a second. Okay, sorry for that. Um, you didn't notice it, but um, I was looking at the issue for the auto completion. I didn't find it, but well, let's actually finish the video. Uh, so we were saying that we need we we need to have a collection is initialized and, and it says for the DB collection. DB came from Firestore directly from Firebase. And this should be like the table that I was saying before. Then we need to have a query. That query, it will use that collection. And then we actually can make, uh, sorry for that. And we'll remove it, there you go. Uh, we can actually do something like, query is going to be, we need to order by, we know what is that, and we will have, and I will show you in a minute. Um, we need to order by created at, it's something that we have there, and we use the descendant mode. And because I'm planning to have like thousands probably of, of chat messages in there, uh, we just need to limit those to 100. That means that we are just getting the newest 100 message right here. That's what makes the query. And then in the actually making the call, it should have a message query dot. And there's a property from Firebase, it's called on a snapshot. So on a snapshot, what we need to do, um, we call that a snapshot, so I would call it as S. A snapshot is whenever there is a change in that particular query that we actually get is by it. So we're going to take that change, call, it's called a snapshot, and we're going to send it in a function. And we are going to reference our message. So we're going to say our message dot value is going to be equal or snapshot document, like whatever we actually call it. Okay. So we are just sending all those messages to be right there, pretty much. After we have those messages, we just need to map them up. Um, and what we're going to do is for every document, I need to extract. The thing is that it is actually not taking the ID. So what I want to do is I will take the ID and add it to the document itself. So I will see, I will do my, the ID of the object. I will create it. That came from the snapshot dot ID. And then I will get the rest of the document data. Uh, need to be to spray it out. There you go. 
not because we are going actually doing that. Um, we just need to reverse it. And we are doing the reverse because I want to have the newest one on the bottom. So what is happening here? When I do the query for limit 100, descendant mode, that means it will be the first 100 results and the newest one will be at the top. But because I want to actually the newest one to be at the bottom, there is no way to put it like limit the last 100, right? There is no way to do that. So here I just reversing that array and put it right here in my message value. So I'm just getting the document from the snapshot and I'm just adding the ID because we need to have an ID. I get all the data information and I'm just reversing it the order. That's pretty much what I'm doing in here. But whenever we do that, we actually need to call it in an unsubscribe because this is actually, we will say, extensively heavily whenever we actually make this kind of calls. We need to have a one point whenever we on mount on mounted our application that's why we actually had that we're going to do something about it and we are going to use unsubscribe that way we can actually unsubscribe from the connections like close the connection very much it's nothing that much so with that we should be able just to see the info and be able to parse it but before we actually save something, we actually now need to to save something. So we're able to get the message collection, we're able to get the message query, right? We're going the message, but now we need to do a function that's going to be send message. And that message will, will get a text and we need to do something about with that text. Right. So the first thing that we need to do is verify if we know authenticated. And it's actually to be here. And we came with the authenticated that value. If we are not authenticated, we're just returning. Like don't do anything at all. Right? If it is, we we'll proceed what we need to do. So we're going to extract different elements from our user object. Remember, we're actually getting the user from here, right? So we're going to extract the photo URL, the user ID, and the display name from my user value object. But why value? Because user is a reference. So after I extract that, I need to reference to my table, or in this case, my collection, I need to add something. So what I will be adding here, I will be adding an object, a document. That document will have the next information. I will the username who created the the the, the, the information, the user ID that I want to claim for the, the UID from the user. The photo URL, but I want to pick the photo that we have saved in Gmail, right? And the text, and actually, I believe we can actually do the text like this, and it should work. One last thing that we need to add is the created ad. And this is going to be something tricky. Don't worry, it's on the documentation, or you can just copy and paste it. I want the created ad, and uh, you're using the field value server timestamp from Firestore, like the local database to get in the timestamp. That's pretty much what I'm saying here. So we have the send message stored to that. And the two elements that we actually need to return in this function is going to be my message and my send message. And that's it. And with that, we have everything for the use Firebase the way that it's supposed to be. Okay. Let me close it for now. Oh, I have an issue here. What is this? Okay, give me a second. 
Okay, sorry for that. I just restart my server and it looks like it's working now. Oh, it's not. And it's really weird what is actually happening. Well, um, that's really, really weird. It's like Boulder is not working properly. Okay, look like it works. No. If I disable it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't know what happened there. Do I have better open? Let me open better here. No, he's disabled. So yeah, I don't know what is happening. Okay, well, sorry for that. Let me continue. Um, where we were? Okay, yeah. So what we need to start doing? We need to start reading our message and be printing those right here in the message section, right? So for that, we actually need to go to the message. This is the one we are going to make in the, the, what can I say? Making the call to, to verify the message that we have in our Firebase application. The way to do it is going to be really, really simple. It's going to be with a simple script tag. We're using a sure code. Let's do the setup here. Um, Okay, that bothers me a lot. What is happening? Oh, wait, I, I added something extra in my JSON. Give me a second here. Okay, so what I need to do in my message section, I need to start working. So ignore those issues for now. Let me verify if the application is actually running. It is not. The un unmounted. I have an issue with my un unmounted. That's crazy. Um, let me check my information. Do I have a typo there? You and. Oh, I'm missing a U. Mounted. Sorry for that. So, what is complaining here that this one doesn't exist is actually this one with a U. That means that it's going to be here too. I save it. I restart. There you go. I have my application. I have my message right there. Okay. Okay, so, so far we have that information. Cool. Let me close this and in my script setup, let me just check my notes really quick. We have a couple of things here. So we need to actually import Define props, compute it, and reference from view. That's going to be important. And we need to import our authentication from the use Firebase. We need to use both. So for the authentication piece, we will get in the user, right? And after we're in the user, we are pretty much. Um, we are going to have, well, let's actually do the props first. And I have the props right here. And it, let me explain what it actually does. So we're going to call this with a props called message. Right? That props message is a type object that is actually a function 
that will call uh, my username, my user ID, user follow URL text and create it. That's the default way that we actually put it when we actually send it. So we are going to read that prompt message and we are going to be doing things with that. But one of the things is that I want to do is I want to create a computer function called if is user that is going to be a simple boolean that will verify if my user value user id is the same as the user id from the props with that we are going to make the reference if the balloon need to be purple or need to be green and we will see that in a minute what else do we need to do here mm -hmm. Actually, no, oh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm actually doing a lot of stuff that is supposed to be here. I'm so sorry for all this, guys. All this information that we actually put in here, it doesn't go to my message. It go in plural, go to my message in singular. But let me just remove that from here for now. Let go to message in singular and let's put it right there. Right, all those should be in my message in singular. So that way, when we actually call it, we have the message object. Um, but with the default should be changed over here. So this icon, we don't need it anymore. And that will be changed to an image. So I will remove the icon and I will put this image over there. This image will take the message user for a URL and the alternative just a button for the username. Right? Just so simple as that. My message text will change to message.text and the author will change to message.text outlaw um, I will leave it up for now at the end I will make the gray and the green logic here so we have that we can see that yeah the information is not there because it's empty and actually we need to remove avatar oh yeah because they, it doesn't actually came in from here that's okay so now we actually need to go one level back and we need to be sending the message over here. How we send those messages is going to be really simple. I need to import from my helper use Firebase, the database section, and I will extract my message from there. And I will do here for every message I call M and my index, right? in message, my key is going to be in the index, I will send as message prop the object M, that each one of those. So now that I save this, I should have anything there, right? Because I don't have any message yet. But I should be able to see, let me check what each other we having. Unsubscribe is not defined. Subscribe. Okay, we can check that in a minute. Let me get back to Firebase. Oops. The use Firebase. Unsubscribe. Oh, I have a typo here. I was not referenced correctly. And let me refresh it. There you go. I don't have errors and I have this one right there. Perfect. So because we don't have any message, it's actually not showing it. Um, and it's not put in there. So we need to start saving message using this little text box from here. So for that, you need to go to the new message section. And again, sorry for those errors that I show in my screen. In your screen, it will not be there. I just want to finish the video right now. And I will import several things from my system. So I will be 
actually print getting my reference from view, my database for my helper use Firebase, and I will extract the send message object from my database. Right? I will have a new message as a new reference that is going to be null. Right? And I will pretty much send the message with that, that particular value. And the value now should be nil. So what we can do here is actually we can actually have some kind of validation. We can do if new message of value exists and new message dot actually okay you can do just value dot length bigger than I don't know one bigger than zero I we have from there we can actually send that message right there And I put them over here and this one over here. So we are just going to send it only with the message is going to be bigger. So how this is actually going to work? We need to bind our input box with the B model to be that new message. And we need to call whenever this one change to do the same. Of course, in the bottom, if we click the bottom we need to do when that actually uh, is going to click, click it, you need to call the set. And that should be it, right? And this should not be there, perfect. Okay, if we see that, let's verify it's actually working. So I'm gonna put a new message. Let me send it. He didn't do it. Let's see what happened. Length of no, of course. So this validation, we can do something like this. It should be more than enough. Let me refresh my page. If I do log out, I'm there, I'm logging in. Okay, if I do new message, enter, I just send that new message to here, and it's pretty neat. Of course, um, we need to make something about this, right? But for now, the new message is actually be sent then, and we can actually be, that this property is actually be created over here. We need to see what is happening with the rest of the elements. Let me show you something here. Let me go to my Firestore element. Uh, you will see that I have now a collection called message and I have a message that is the new message I just created. That's the beauty of this. Let me put this on the left, let me put this, sorry, right and left. And let me remove my console. So whenever I actually send something here, another message, and I send it, look what happened to the database right away. Boom that message just get created here. The same will happen. And let me just add a new one. If I add a new one, and let's actually start adding the elements. Uh, let's call this text, call another from DB. And it will keep it like that, it will put the rest. But if I just save that, Our ID. If I just save that, that'll get printed here. And in theory, oh, it's not there because I don't have the created that. I'm making that calculation. But let me change this one from here. Let me add a field created at. It's going to be timestamp. And let me make that time to, to be right now. Well, probably like that should be enough. 
So the moment I created that timestamp, a new element was created and was pushed to my server, to my application. So now I have three elements here, and I have three elements. If I add another to the database, look at that, I'm actually not making any call to refresh it. That gets just pushed it right away. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Now let's actually fix the information, what is happening there. So let me go to message, and I have my prop as message. Right, uh, something is not available to be read at here. Message. Message author. Oh wait, it's no message author, is message username. If I save that. Let me refresh it. It's not working. Let me see what is happening. console let me go through my view and let me troubleshoot through here so you can see my object Major message is an object and the id is undefined so i have an issue with my message it's not being sent let me go through message and i have three different messages if i open those all those actually undefined oh that means that the call for the message is actually failing a little bit. Let's see what is actually failing. Okay, now what is the issue? As you can see, I'm actually asking for the snapshot ID. I should be asking for the document ID. And then the rest of the document data. So when I do that, in theory, it should be saved. Let me refresh it. In my message object okay i have my data there i have my id but the rest of the data is actually not getting pulled oh data is a function sorry for that so there you go so i get my document id and my document data but data are a function to rest it and i will push it so just with doing that if i refresh There you go. I have a message, another message, and another from database. There you go, and I have those right here. I have the information there. Of course, this one is because I created in the database, I didn't put the rest of the information. It looks like that, right? So let me actually put this on the left and let me empty the collection. At the moment that I empty my collection of the database, my data on the application is to get deleted. That's pretty cool. So let's do message one. Let me send that. Oh, wait. Message query. And then this message collection. Message collection. I have a typo there. There you go. So if I do that, let me refresh. Hello there. Welcome to the chat. So that's pretty neat. Um, if I went back and forward with information here, don't worry, you have access to the source code. You can actually see what, is it, what I put in the end. So sorry for those typos that was put in here and there. So after I have that message, and that's actually be printed. Let me show you again with my personal email. So for this particular case, I created another account. And that one doesn't have image, as you can see. So let me log in with that. It has the same name, but without the accent, right? But this is cool. As you can see, I have the new one there. And in the new name here. So we can have the Roman with accent and without accent. So we can actually see that that is actually working. That's pretty neat. The last piece of this puzzle will be to actually difference. I want to put this one that's green when I'm logging in with the, that user. So when I send, with the, depending on the user that I'm logging in, I want to actually see this actually green. 
In order to do that, let's actually go to the message section. And remember that we have that it's computed thing. So we have the classes over here and we're going to add an extra class. And in that class, something needs to happen. So what is going to happen in that class, we are going to actually check that um, is user that the only things that actually using the user user is verifying that the user ID of the message is the same one. But this use is the will show true or false. And remember this symbol is the same as three equal signs. Right? So when we actually make that calculation, we can actually I can actually do something like this. And I have it there as a purple, but I will change this to gray. Let me remove this from here and let me put it right here. And it's really simple. If I am the user, we we'll me add the green. If not, add the gray. That's it. And just with that, I can see when I'm logging in with the raw format with an accent, I can see that that's green. If I go back with my first user, and let me do a login here. With my first user, I will see those messages at green and the other ones at gray. So now I can notice my message. Green it. So one last thing that I want to do. Well, something extra that I want to actually add here. And, it, and I feel that is pretty pretty neat. Is add some kind of animation so if you want to stop the video here and you have everything through here the functionality is there everything is doing i just want to add an extra step so what i want to do is add a couple of animations here and there and i i want to select those and actually copy the content i want to show you how to copy the content just with a simple click and i, I think that actually is going to be pretty neat so for that we're actually going to use a couple of use function from here there's something called clipboard there you go it's a reactive clipboard api and um, probably it will, it will require like to accept that one but what we're going to use use, use the clipboard in order to copy something right and that's pretty neat. the only things that i want to use to if i go to the add-ons i go to motion you use motion, those actually, let me go to demos, demos. It has some kind of pretty neat animation there, right? Look at this hover over here. Uh, this toggle like showing and disappearing. So it, it have a cool thing like animation wise. And it's actually not that difficult to implement. So let's get started. So the first thing is going to the application i want to do logout i want to do an emphasis to this so dial wing have also some cool animations and there's well they have a basic information but for this particular purpose it will help us like we have the spin the ping the pulse and the bounce right the spin is something like this the pull the ping something like that the pull is something like this and the bounce is just like moving so probably we can use the bounce let's see how it looks like let me go to my oh wait let me comment first So let me go to my no authorization and I will bounce the text. Just added animate bounce. And with that, we just can see, please log in to proceed. Cool. Let me actually remove it from there and let me put it in the main div class. 
Uh, probably it's too much. Then put it just on the image, on the icon. Okay, that's better. Like, the icon is making attention. And I, I'm able to read specifically that I need to log in to proceed. And we have a little animation with just one line of code. That's pretty cool. For more advanced content, we, have, we need to do something extra. So let me just log in here. Let me go to the chat. So I want to click those now and I want to copy those the information. How can we do it? Well, we're going to install first the functions for the browser, I believe, the clipboard. So I just, we need to install the core element for views in order to use the clipboard. clipboard. So let me just copy that and do npm install that. Right. And we're going to use the clipboard on the where is it? My message section. So here, after view, let's actually import the the use clipboard section. Right. We already have the reference imported so what i want to do for that reference i want to create something called a source and let me put that at the bottom and the source is going to be the things that i will copy right and i will just put this element over here this is actually came from this one instead of the sending the text and the supported i just want to get the copy and the copy it functions right and I tied it up to the source element. So what I'm doing now is I will create another function called copy message. And this copy message is going to change my value for my message text, the message that I'm currently selecting by the username. And then I just execute copy. And I will leave it like that for now. So what I want to do here is for the whole element, but whenever I do a click, I can just do copy message. Let's see if this actually works. So if I click here and try to paste it, I can see help there, hello there by Rodolfo format. Let me copy this one over here. Let me just click it. And I paste it, this is cool by Rodolfo Roman with an accent. If I click this one and paste it, now I can notice I can notice my message by Rodolfo Roman. That's pretty neat. But we have the cover functionality, but we can actually not see the interactivity when we actually select it, right? So for doing that, we need to add a couple of things here. Right, it's going to be actually really, really simple. We're going to, and this is going to be using also Tagwin for this because it's going to be a simplest one. So for the class, I need to add a transition. And also need to add a transform. Need to change my cursor to be a pointer. And whenever I hover over, well, let me do that for now. So this is the only thing that is doing this cursor is actually doing this, right? So now I can see that there is something if I just click here, I can actually copy that message. But so, well, for extra, I want to, when I hover over, the scale is going to change to one of five. And I don't know why I don't, oh, it's hover. So in order to scale to work, I need to have a transform and a transition there. So now I can, can see that interactivity there. So I can see, okay, yeah, perfect. Let me select this. And I can see now, oh, sorry. Okay, we can actually copy that information from here. There you go. So we got interactivity and we have the clicking element. Cool. One last thing that I want to add 
I want to have some kind of feedback, right? Whenever I click it, I want to have the say like message was copied, something like that. I want to have some kind of pop up somewhere, probably down here. So let's start um, creating that pop up, right? And it's going to be really simple. It's going to be here at the end. We're going to use a div element. Uh, in this element, we have a, a p tag that will just say message copy it. And uh, right now we have it right there. Oh. Doesn't matter. Now what I need to do here is start changing the look and feel that. So I have those already here. Let me just put those one right there. And what I'm making is I create like it to be yellow, to be rounded, and to be positioned right here. Remember this background yellow, absolute, and in a padding Y and padding X, rounded full, and just put in the bottom 16 and right four, very much. And that's why we have that message there. And now we just need to put something different. I want to show this only when my message was copied. This element from here, copied, is a Boolean value. When I select it, that will actually just put it there. We will can change to true, and after some second, it will change to false. So the pretty cool thing about this, if I can use just be if, oops, do it only if copy is selected. So if I click this, message copy it. If I click this one, message copy it. Perfect. One last thing that probably we need to do here, just to save it, let's do once. And when we click once, that means that it should happen only once at a time. So when we click here, message copy. If we click it again, oops, it's not doing anymore. Oh, it's not once. View tree, click modifier. The click modifiers in the event handling for view tree is actually pretty neat. It will allow you to do a modification of that particular event. So we have the stop, the prevent, the capture, self, once, and pass it. Right? The stop, the click and propagation will be stopped. So probably this, this is what I need to do. Prevent is not to do the, the, the preventing one. And I can change those. That's pretty cool. To use the modifier, that means it doesn't do anything there. And click capture mode when adding the event listener. And we don't need that one. And self is for the element itself. Well, we have different one. And once it will be triggered at most once, only one time. Yeah. Passive is do something extra, right? But those are different event modifiers. So probably the one that we need to do is the stop in order to propagation. Maybe. I'm actually trying to invent this. I think it's actually doing what we need to. So let me do that. Let me click this one. Copy it if I click it again. Yeah, right there. There you go. If I click it again, it's not doing anything until that actually finishes. Perfect. So we actually have that calculation, and that's pretty neat. So now, the one last thing that I want to do is, you know that element code enters right away and get out right away. Yeah. And probably we can change the color. Instead of being black, let's put it um, yellow. Oops. Class 
let's do text yellow 900 yeah, a lot better cool and you know what we can actually do the same here um that's in the new message this one class text yellow 900 there you go a little more smoother perfect we have that one there and we have that one there now i feel that i need to have that same color for both so here i'm using background yellow 300 that means that for my message it may pop up and probably i could save this like a new element but i will keep it here for now i can use 300 here too so that means we have the same color there so this is going to be a, a lot more advanced the view motion and i want to show you how to do it and i want to show you how to re read some kind of documentation and do something right but in order to install it we need to install the motion section we are using npm we're not using yarn so we just need to install this npm install motion and the way to install it we just need to import it in the main javascript file and use it so let me select this go to my main javascript i will import it right here right and i just need to use it and instead of doing all this i will just chain it right here use motion mount at application so we have this installed and let me go through the documentation get started and let me show you the quick start we can actually specify v motion and initial state is going to be this enter state is going to be that and we do have a lot of control of what to do there but something pretty neat is that we actually have some cool already created and i'm looking for those ones right now uh, where they are preset there you go we have some preset and those are actually faster to create so the fate is just doing something like that roll from the bottom is doing that animation that's actually pretty neat um roll top is doing something like that the one that i like it is the pop one i believe it's pretty neat and it's pretty much what we needed so let me just select that v motion pop and i will paste it in my message on as a directive of the div element oops i just put v motion pop as it is but that will allow me when i click it we can set that animation right it doesn't go smoothly because that's how uh, uh, the transitions work in view because we're using the if so what we need to tell view now is when that element is going to go away we need to trigger the leaf event right and that's the complexity part so we can leave it like that if we want it in my case i don't want that i, I want to go to far away better so view have in order to handle those transitions view already have created some transition um, elements and let me surround this as a transition you will see that everything is pretty much the same and i will say to the transition well before I actually do that i need to use my motion uh, i need to get the instance in order to get the instance i just need to import it like that use motion and that will allow me and let me go to the bottom so my motion use the motion pretty much and that's it with that we have access to the motion instance the or the animation itself and we can do something about it so because we have access to the animation 
the transition could trigger a specific event, and this is for view, and you can look for that if you need it. That is a, a live event. So whenever I do a live event, I want to do something about it. And for something about it, it's going to be a function. And that function, the only thing that I need to do is, let's call it remove notification. So now I can create my phone's remote notification that is going to be a function that's going to be doing something, right? And the only thing that is going to be doing there is uh, my checking my notes. And actually this will get two different elements. We'll get the element by itself and the done function and we just need to execute the callback for my motion like hey my notification will leave you see this notification we need to put it as a name right here it like they will call notification and this should be element and done I believe something like that if we do that then over there and it's actually not doing it going in and it goes out right away remove notification probably if i copy this because originally what i did is just put it right here instead of actually calling like that Put it right here. Oh wait. Um oh yeah, I'm missing this. I need to return something, right? Return. Get in. No, it didn't go out. Oops. Let me do it like this, let's see if it actually works. No. Okay, so probably I don't have access to the element over here. So let me actually just put it right here in the leaf event. Okay, it never left now. <laughs> so it's actually not doing it. What is not doing it? And then we it from here. Click it, shoulder, and it go back. Perfect. As you can see, now do that little transition the way that I wanted. So it took more complication, right? But I just wanted to show it, and you can mimic this code if you want to change some kind of animation. So this is actually pretty neat. What I want to see if I can actually do it for the chat, like whenever I add a new one. It's still showing, like I want that one to appear. Hmm, let's try it. I don't know if that actually want to work because I didn't test it. So let me do something like this. So if I refresh it, all of them are shown. And this is going to be another one. Perfect. That one just show because it's doing the animation. Pretty cool. There's one last thing that I want to do that I didn't test it either. And you will see that it's going to be a pain right now. So let me continue adding text to create 
Let me log out. Let me go with the other account. Four, five, six, seven, here, eight. You notice something? Yeah, <laughs> everything just get messed up somehow. Like this one is not working the way it's supposed to, right? So I want to handle that a little bit and let me see how can I actually do that. So the first thing that I notice is this should not be moving. So I can actually go to my new message and I can make this fix it. And I cannot have absolute and fix it at the same time, probably. There you go. So now I can scroll, actually. So now, on my message, in cruel, I can actually have in the last one, I don't know if I can actually do it here. Actually, I can probably put a div here. And I want to show you what I want to do here. So I will grab all my message. And in that particular div, I want to add a class with a margin bottom of 12. I believe that's the height of that thing. So if I do that, I can actually scroll and I can see this, right? because it's actually taking the sizing. Let me make it this a little bit bigger and let me 16, probably. And a lot better. So we have that right there. Cool. Let me see if I can change my header and that with my number to be fixed. Let me put fix it here. Ooh. Just to put it fixes, let me put it top zero, left zero, and right zero. Yeah, um, what height do I have here? Not sure. What well, that means that by my message. This one, I have a margin bottom, I can do a margin top, and that probably should be bigger, 32. There you go. So now I want to make this to stay on the top. Navbar, I have a set, set index. Let me look for set index. Say index scale. Yeah, C to 1 to 10. So let's actually make this to have a C10, probably. I don't know if that's actually going to work. There you go. So we are keeping this one on top and this one on top, and we can actually scroll. When we started, probably 32 is too big, as you can see it right here. So let me change my message to my top to be 28, maybe. A uh, lot better, but now 24. There you go. Wait, 26? No, 26 doesn't exist. Um, let's do 28. The nearest one. There you go. So we can actually scroll. So the last thing that I want to do here is I'm gonna go last message. I want this to be scrolled at the bottom by default. And I believe Justin did it in his video. Um, not sure how he did it. But he has, he has he was able to scroll. Right? Um,
So probably I can make a reference to this and try it to scroll to that section. Something that he did actually. So let me see if I can actually do it. Let me go to the new message and let me make this a reference. Mm. We can make something to scroll to the bottom. Let's look for that with JavaScript. JavaScript, scroll the bottom. Scroll to so I'm talking about is scroll back. Yeah, we can try that. Should be simple enough. Let's go when in the new message section. When we add a new message, we just can do something like Windows scroll to scroll back. Let's see if it actually works. Go to buy, enter, and now it did it. Let's actually change the question from instead of JavaScript, let's do view. Let's scroll down. Okay, I need to do a reference. And the scroll top will be the height of that particular container. Mm, that could work. So in order to make this work, we need to do what we need to do here. Let's remove this one from here. She, she should, this one should not be here. So I don't have access. here to the deep of the message that's actually right here what I want to do is I want to go to the bottom of this div whenever I do something so probably I can use a uh, emit yeah let me add a reference here I can add a reference and let's call this um, message container and I can do uh, import reference from view and the cool thing about those reference you can actually call it like do cons message container equal a reference welcome to the empty so that it will be automatically this div element And let me add a button here for now. We call this go to bottom. And whenever I click it, I need to go. So let's do cons go. I need to do message container dot value and I need to do what we need to do the scroll top need to be the scroll height Just in case that that exists, scroll top, right? It should be equal to the same thing dot scroll height. 
let's see if I can actually execute this function we're good to go I didn't like it why didn't I like it Invalid left hand size in assignment to where eight two. Interesting. So I have my message container. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't exist. So another typo there. Now what is this enough? By left hand side assignment and expression. Cons message container equal reference. Yeah, it should be like that. Reference will be important from view. Yes. And I have that as a reference right here. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Then I do that one. Value scroll top. Let's actually do something extra here. Let's do console.log message container dot value. I have where is my button now? <laughs> Let's put the button before right here. Well, it doesn't make sense to have it there. There, there you go. Go to button and let's do what it does. Console. Yeah, he's making the reference to that. I'm actually getting that element. But that's perfect. So probably need to do something extra with the JavaScript section. Do I need to do a query selector? Mm. I need to do another dip here. Let's do this one. Now let me try to do what uh, Justin did. You do something like this. I save in this one in another message. And uh, let's call this reference going to be at the bottom. But it's already there, so it will not work. Let's put that one right there, and let's self-close it. So we should be navigating to that. And that just after my old message. Yeah, so click to go to bottom. We can actually get rid of this. Right. And let's change this one to be bottom. This one to be bottom. Let's see what it does. Refresh it. If I click it, I have that empty element. Perfect. So he did something like this. It's really weird. You scroll into view. If I click it, 
There you go. <laughs> nice. So that's actually what we need to do. But we need to trigger this, not through a button, whenever we add a new element, new one, that should trigger that, and uh, we need to call that function through here. Okay. So let's remove the button. We don't need it anymore. And let's call this go to button. Yeah. Oops, and it's not the console log actually. Yeah, that should be enough. So let's actually look for the emit section. But what I want to do now, I want to go to my. I'm looking at my notes for the notes app to verify how we actually did the emit functionality. And that should happen on the not form, yes. So we need to import in the new message reference and define emit. And on define emit, you need to call it. I'm going to say some, you need to do something about those emit, like, and actually to be before the set. So the emit is going to be added. So the new method they will emit the added event that is going to be custom, right? That mean we can actually use to new message and we can actually emit and it will open them emit my added cool so we define a custom emission we have a custom um event called added and it's going to be emitted whenever we send a new message and that message is valid right so whenever we do that that means that my message in plural this one will Whenever we have an added event, we just need to call go to bottom. And yeah, I know those whole lines are very confusing, but just ignore them for now. Go to bottom, and that should be enough. So I'm up here, and uh, let's put a look like last one. Let's actually change this. Ooh, almost there, almost there. Another one. Ooh, it's actually doing it. Hello. But well, we need to push it a little more. That means that we need to put the margin at the bottom. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, we actually need to push a margin on the top. So this margin that we have here. Scroll into view. This actually to the bottom one. Class of margin top of sixteen. And probably we can remove this now from here. If I do that one more time. Okay, the sizing is correctly, but it's actually not moving it. Oh my god. So we need to change the scrolling to build to something extra. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing the scrolling to build, probably we actually need to do the scroll top. JavaScript, scroll top. Do we have a scroll button? Scroll to. Hmm. 
Let's look for that. Let's scroll bottom. Well, that exists. Not sure. Let me go back here. Let's JavaScript scroll bottom. And scroll top should be scroll high, actually. Can I change that to actually be scroll to? Let me check the scroll to event. What it does is coordinates. Mm, top. It should be the height. Yeah, probably. Whoa, what is open my Discord there? <laughs> okay, so probably. Let me check something. And yes, taking over the minutes, but well, all of this is optional, right? So let me check this. It's called into scroll to oh, let's actually save it for now and let's do bottom value dot and the name should be height right have we had it before scroll height let me see if that actually works and let's do a console log. If this actually works, I think we had it. Let me inspect it. And let me see what the console actually says. It's one, two, Oh, the height is, oh my God. Yeah, the height is zero. Mm. View, scroll to bottom. What about the window? End of the page. Document body. Let's see this. Let's scroll to. Let's put that one right there, and let's see if it actually works. Um, please work. Yeah, almost there. We need to push it a little bit more. Uh, and actually, this call too, I believe I can do this smoothing. It's smooth, right? MDM scroll to. Behavior smooth. Wait, what? Oh, it's like this or like this. So actually, this should be an object. And top will be this. And behavior to go right here without that parenthesis. In theory, let's see. One more. 
Almost there. It's doing everything, but because we have this as fixed element. Mm. So probably something that we can actually do. Can I add instead of margin a padding? <laughs> See if that actually works. Okay. Oh, almost. So if I do a padding bottom, those actually works. I do one more. Oh, he's doing it, but this actually came later. Oh. Okay, I know what is actually happening. He's doing it, but this actually came after the pack. Oh, I know what else to do now. Sorry for this, guys. So, we have, because we have an animation, and the mission is actually synchronous, the element get uploaded on the application after we scroll. So probably we need to wait. And that should be pretty much way for the next tick, probably. Next tick, what it is, is like for the next time that everything saves, for everything move along, we should be able to do it. So let me actually... Let me try to do it like this. So let me import next tick. The next tick is like the next iteration of changes. And this came from the view notification. And we can do something like this. So cost bottom for next tick. Do it. Like after. Let's see it. Again. No. If not doing like that, probably we need to wait. Um Set timeout. Yeah, so instead of doing next tick, let me actually remove that. Let me see if this is actually still working. Okay. And let's do say timeout. And we can just look for here. Set timeout. This is a function from JavaScript. Set timeout, probably. And it's a function that will do something about it in a specific quantity of time. Okay. So what I want to do, instead of doing all this, I'm going to be doing this. So I'm going to do the scroll. After, let's do one second. This is milliseconds, so here should be one. So the scroll should wait just a little bit. So another. No, I actually do it really fast. Let's take this to be three. One more. No. Again. Actually, really fast. Mm, let's actually be smarter. Um, we have a timeout here. <laughs> Time mount function. Use timeout. So 
promises timeout. Okay, here so Okay. To do the timeout function then. And here's to something after two seconds. So because we already had the view score, let me actually just get the timeout function. Let's see if that actually works. Um I need to import everything from here. So here let's just import this timeout function. And we can actually do something like this before they go to bottom. Call it like that. And here's go the actual function, and the actual function should be this. Without this, probably. So here, the only things that I need to do is a start. Like start the function, it should happen after three seconds. And that's going to be my last iteration. If this doesn't work, probably I need just to cut a bunch of video for you guys. Sorry for that. So let me refresh. Let me see that I don't have any error there. Okay. Okay, that happened there. Last one. One more. One, two, three. Okay, it's doing it now. So 3000 is too big. Let's do 1000. Last one. Let's reduce this to 500 milliseconds. One more. There you go. Nice. Perfect. So the last thing that we can actually need to do, let me just log out. Let me log in. Then we'll go through here. I want to go to the bottom right away. So let me add the unmounted. And what I need to do in unmounted, I just need just to execute, go to bottom. And it goes right away to the bottom. Cool. So let me log out. Let me log in. Let me select the account. And it goes to the bottom right away. Perfect. So I believe we have all the information. If we copy this, do we still see that little... Ooh, we lose, we lose something extra. <laughs> we lose the animation in there. Oh, this is getting crazy and crazy. Why we lose the animation now? And the hover over. I have an issue in the console. I have an issue in the console. I cannot read property leave of undefined. Message copy it is just get it down on the top, but if you can see it, it's right there. <laughs> okay, it's actually doing it, right? But I just don't see it. Because it actually happened right on the top. So let's change. <laughs> let's get back to that. New message. 
um, this one let's change it from actually not a message it's in message yes here it is so instead of doing it as absolute let's do fix it so copy this one is there copy this one is there copy this one is there okay so the only things that i need to do is the whole thing i will see the index of 10 so it doesn't matter where i am it's always on the top perfect that's the last thing that is actually missing here is this one transform hover scale 105 why is not doing it transform transition cursor pointer let me just close this and run it again Go to the bottom, message copy it. Yeah, but I have an issue now with Tobin. Here, start transform scale one, value zero, scale one, and then hover. Who make this scale one translate zero? Yeah, because of this. Who put those right there? Element style. If I remove those. have it there so somebody actually add that oh you know who it was the me motion thing the me motion override my cover state interesting so if I remove this I refresh okay we have that going on now if I add something well probably we can live with without pop yeah, that's going to be a lot better okay so the V motion it was messing up with this from here but that's okay, we can keep it like that. So I believe we have the chat ready. And it's actually ready to deploy. We have almost two hours and we mess around a lot in the extra animation things. Yeah. So we can have that, we can have the login page, okay. We have that hover over. We have that nice scroll. And we have that notification that we just created so it's going to stay right there perfect so i believe we have everything so let's do when it's committed um, finish it up right and let's push it and let's do a really really quick um after you get pushes i believe we can close this I don't need it anymore. Let me close my Discord. And I can actually go to my server. Let me go to sites. I probably need to install dependencies again, but let's do that later. And let me just do git clone 
and the name of this that I have is the chat, I believe. Yeah, I have it right here. I will close that in my repository. I go to chit chat. I will install dependencies. Something really, really important here. In order to make it to work, we need to add the Firebase configuration first. So, after we install dependencies, I go to the source directory and we need to list everything that we have there. So, we have the components and the helpers, but we don't have the config as we had it in our let me try to open it in a new tab cd project the chat source this is locally in my computer so we have that config information so let's actually do mkdir config we go to the config and we need to do to the config And you can actually open this in Visual Studio Code, but because I have a Mac, probably for me going to be faster if I do a cat. And copy all these keys, and I will create nano firebase.javascript and paste all those there. Control X, yes, enter. That was really, really important. The nano firebase is there. And it's the same name that we had before, Firebase. Yes, it is. So without that, our application will not work. So after we have that, and we can actually do it, we can go to the base root and we can do npm run build. Oh, I didn't put the template in Tongwing. I forget completely about that. Well, it's going to be a really big file. <laughs> oh yeah, we need to fix that. Um, how can we fix it really quick? Let me go to my local file. Let me actually open the directory. I forget completely and something that it don't worry it will not happen to you guys I, I will have that already ready I didn't put anything in my porch ah, silly me <laughs> okay so let me just get it from another app probably it will be faster I just need to put the push there. Fix it. Darwin perch. And let me push it. Okay. So I can actually go here. I will do control C. I will cancel whatever it was doing it. Eh? And I will do git pull in order to get the new information. And I will npm install everything. I don't need to do anything with my Firebase config because I already put it there. So you don't want to go into overwrite that. So that now I can do npm run build. And it should be a lot faster. Maybe. And I will pause the video for a minute until that actually finishes. Okay, it's done. And we go to the distribution folder and we can see that everything is there. Perfect. Let's do PWD. Let's have it there. And let me do sudo pi 
etc nginx configuration.d and it will call this chitchat.com before that let me just copy this and save it somewhere okay open the file and i will do a server right and in my server i need to add my listen to port 80 and then i need to listen to port 80 again but now in the ip version 6 format then i just do my server name and that should be hit chat dot in my case Rodolfo Roman dot NYC and the location I need to do the root it's going to be what I pasted and the other thing is view history nginx I always forget that Drive files, there you go. Drive files thing is going to be there. Let me just put that one in the same like perfect. And then I just close it. And let's make an extra enter here. Yeah, I believe that's pretty much what I need. Let me control X. Oh, I'm using BI. For you guys, you use just nano. Just do uh, control X, right? I just be here in this case, I just do escape, control C, column, right Q, WQ, enter, and I get it out. For you guys, you need to do the nano thing, it's easier sometimes if you're not familiar with BI. So now I can do sudo nginx dash test, okay, sudo nginx does s reload oops reload and the last thing that i need to add i need to go to my digital ocean and i didn't add my how it's called my domain So let me add my chit chat and that will go to my front end server. I put a tree there and create it. When you have that kind of error, I just go hard refresh and I need like somehow like sign in again. Like my credentials are not saved somehow. I don't know why. After I do that, I can see this everything. I do again chit chat. I select my front end server create there you go and let me try to go and there you go my application is working but it's not secure in order to make it secure uh, to do the login to work we need to put the nginx in my, my servo sorry so this was sudo servo and dash dash nginx And we just need it for the chit chat that is going to be number two. So I do two, enter, and just wait. Okay, perfect. That finishes. Let me just get back. If I refresh this, I should have it pages. So let me log in with my account. Go to the bottom and Hello from server. Cool. Now, if they want to clean up this, the only way to do it, let's go to the console in your Firebase and we we'll just clean up the database itself. I go to Firestore and let me just delete collection.
perfect. And now my file is there and hello there. <laughs> hello there. And there you go. And that's it. So far we did a lot. Um, don't worry, I will put timestamp on the video so you can actually skip the section for the troubleshooting if you want to do it. Like if you want to go from finish up and go to deployment without doing the animation, that should be enough. If you're actually doing that skipping, it's just added stuff like this, right? And, and the message copied right there. So this is what we did. So I hope that I didn't complicate that much to everybody. I tried to do my best. Um, doing this video, my Visual Studio Code mess up, so I probably need to restart everything there. I need to verify what happened. But meanwhile, I really hope that you like it. Um, any question, any doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody. <laughs>